Hello, hello, hello. Happy Monday morning. I'm having um, internet dramas upstairs not working. Helpful. And downstairs, my tripod's not working. So I'm sitting in the only spot in the house with crazy hair that actually is working for me. And it looks like I've got a pig sitting on my head. <laughs> I'm just gonna roll with that. You can just enjoy that. Chicken, eel, pig, and a bull, I guess. Anyway, how are we all? Happy Monday, yay, happy Monday. I um, hope you guys have had a cracking weekend. Hey, Hayley. Oh, you're on my list of people to follow up with today. Hope you're well. Um, hi, Lauren. Um, so, I just thought today I, hey, Kristen. Oh, all the legends rocking on on a bright and early on a Monday. Um, I had a massive weekend and I wanted to talk you through it today. Um, I... It, and it totally is business related. And I think I've done so much self-reflection and so much thinking over the last week that uh, there's some really interesting elements to the big puzzle that I've pulled together that I thought I would talk you through today. So I am gonna talk about resilience, which I have spoken to you about before and I will continue to talk to you about it because I think it's really, really critical. Uh, and I just keep getting reminded of the importance of building that muscle or stress testing that muscle a little bit further um, because all of the challenges that my clients face um, in my business are, or in their businesses, I should say, are anchored in a place of resilience and being able to find the confidence to make decisions or the courage to take action or um, upskill, whatever it might be, it really, really does come from having some resilience and some grit and that consistent determination to keep pushing forward, which is freaking hard in today's crazy, crazy world. I totally give you that. And I face all those challenges myself in my own business and in my own personal life. So A, not alone. B, I absolutely haven't cracked the code, but I've had some amazing learnings and experiences over the last, um, particularly the last week, but also the last couple of years prior that I thought I would talk you through that I thought might help. Hey, Kristen, Narelle, hello, Sarah, hi guys. Oh, so nice to have you all here. Charlotte, hello, hello. Sneak on with your little pink wall, I love it. Hope you've had an awesome weekend as well, beautiful girl. So, uh, we celebrated the life of my friend yesterday who passed away 12 months ago. Um, wowza, what a 12 months that's been. Uh, and the whole journey and the whole experience and the whole, uh, the last couple of weeks has been really hectic for me and not pretend, probably something that I'd anticipated. Um, I'm not going to talk about death endlessly, don't worry. But my dad did pass away when I was really little. So I have grown up with an anniversary each year or his anniversary each year that we've celebrated. So, um, and that's been beautiful and heart-wrenching and all that sort of stuff. Every single year feels like it's a different emotional roller coaster that I've gotten on. But it's always been the one day that's been his day. We've celebrated his birthday as well, but when his date rolls around in October, um, that's always the day that it sits really heavy with me. This time around, the joys of grief, it's different. Um, and I, same with Greg passing away, I'd anticipated that his anniversary would be the really hard day. And then when I got hit last week with um, all the feels and all the emotions in the world, I was a little overwhelmed and a little bit confused about why it was happening to me then and why so soon and why not on the actual day and all this like crazy thought that was going through my head. I was like, this is, it's not meant to be till the actual day and why am I feeling this already? And it just made me realize that grief and the grieving process, um, I don't want to say rears its ugly head, but uh, comes in waves and comes at different times and is different for every experience and different for every person. So um, that within itself has been a really big learning process for me. But I spoke uh, to 150 million different people over the last week <laughs> about grief and pain and guilt and all of those really positive topics. <laughs> Um, and if you haven't already noticed, the way I get through things is by talking. Um, I've got plenty of friends who uh, shut yourself away, disappear for however long and deal with it on your own. 
I, shock horror, am a talker. <laughs> so um, if you've come across me in the last two weeks, I've probably spoken to you about death or grief or pain or hurt or the heaviness that you feel in your chest or whatever it might be, because that's how I learn and that's how I process um, where I'm at and how I can understand your thoughts on the process and share from, you know, learn from your experiences and all that sort of stuff. So um, that within itself has been really, really important to me to work through all of that is by talking to people and through that process, taking on their guidance and taking on their advice and their opinions and their thoughts has really helped me form my own. So, um, my number one learning, I think throughout this whole process is, the value of connection and the value of talking to one another. And it's something that I've spoken to my boy or my eldest little boy, who's nearly eight about a lot as well. The importance of talking, um, not bottling it up in all inside and lock, locking it all away, but verbalizing it and reaching out to people and connecting. So I have stress tested and built my resilience like nothing else in the last week. And today feels different, um, which, I know, sounds a little crazy, but I've woken up um, feeling more energized and more um, vibrant and with a little bit more pep in my step, I guess, if that's even possible. And I know you guys often, I often get feedback from you guys that you're like, God, do you have like 25 coffees before six because you're always bouncing off the walls first thing in the morning? I absolutely am a morning person. But today I feel really proud of myself and I feel like I'm starting the next chapter or I've moved forward or I've, I've worked through all of that stuff and today is day one of the next bit. Which is like, yay, fuck, good job, Emily. You've made it. <laughs> and I do feel like I've made it. I was talking to Nikki this morning. She's not on the line, but I know she'll watch this later. Um, she sent me a message this morning saying, well done, you got through. And I was like, shit, yeah, like I actually did. And I'm still here to tell the story and I'm still here with a smile on my face. So something within that is worth celebrating or worth talking about. But for me, um, if I reflect on the last week and the last 12 months and the last you know, 22 years of my life, because that's how old I am. Um, resilience and grit. I love the word grit. I don't know why. There's just something about it that's like grit. It's like grit your teeth and get shit done. Like, anyway, I won't talk to you endlessly about the word grit. But there's something in the resilience space that I think is critical for us all to have a think about and start to put some of those things in place. Because if I reflect on how I've processed um, the grief and the sorrow and the pain and the shame and all that sort of stuff over the last week, uh, I've constantly come back and all the conversations I've had with people have come back to I can control how I respond to that situation I can't I can't control how that situation came about how that person died um, how that you know business deal didn't go the way I wanted how the client treated me whatever it might be you have no control over how other people behave all you can control is how you respond to that situation and how you behave in response to that which I know sounds really 101, but when you are caught in that emotional spiral and you're caught sitting there in your pity party and it all feels too hard and the world's bearing down on you and all that sort of stuff, it is so hard or so easy to forget that you're in control. Like I, the last week has been fucking hard for me, uh, but I have been in, I am, and I have been in control of how I respond to that situation. So it's our responsibility as individuals and as humans to respond in a way that aligns to our values and that is congruent to the type of person that we want to be. And I think that's a really, really important lesson for all of us just to sit and reflect on in the sense that you can't control all the stuff that goes on outside. Um, you can try and control freak over here, massive A type personality. I do try <laughs> endlessly all day, every day. <laughs> and I'm constantly reminded that I can't control any of that stuff. But what I can control is how I respond to all of that stuff. Um, and that's been really, really important for me um, to remember how important or how powerful that can be, I guess, in the sense that I'm in control and the way I'm going to move forward is by controlling my own action, my own actions and being the type of person that I want to be. 
So five little things that I wanted to whip you through this morning, um, which you're not going to nail resilience and you're not going to nail grit from the get-go. I totally get that. I haven't nailed it either. But um, each of these experiences, hey, Cara, each of these experiences and each of these moments where I need to pull or draw from that resilience um, pool or resource that I've got inside me, um, I'm reminded of the importance of it. The first one is around self-awareness. And some of that is around... Um, remembering that control piece so remembering that you're the one in control but really getting in tune to where you're at and understanding self has probably been the number one oh no i wouldn't say that it's, it's been one of the biggest <laughs> i'll say elements that has enabled me to move forward and enabled me to feel like um that i was able to get through and today i've absolutely gotten through it it's not like signed sealed and delivered job done locked away in a little box but i've done some really really big soul searching and some big um thinking that's helped me get forward so self-awareness is about under for me is about understanding my beliefs and my motivations and understanding how the big wide world has an impact on all of that for me and starting to understand how others respond to me. So I know I have a really um, powerful personality, let's call it. <laughs> There's probably a lot of you laughing right now. Um, I get told quite often that I'm really intimidating, which makes me laugh because I'm far from, I believe, I am far from intimidating. But I have really good self-awareness about the fact that some people do find me intimidating, particularly in person. Um, they've watched a lot of my videos where I come across very confident, I come across very strong, strongly opinionated, and then they meet me and I'm really tall. <laughs> <laughs> which I know sounds crazy. But yes, if you didn't know, I was, <laughs> I'm tall, I'm tall. And I think a few of those factors make people go, oh, she's intimidating. Um, and so I've got really good self-awareness around that. And I'm really mindful when I meet people for the first time that I'm not massively in their face and I'm not, you know, hugely like bounding up to them and screaming at them and all that sort of stuff. I'm also extremely, I have really, really strong um, introverted tendencies. So that balances that piece out as well. But um, I do have really, really good self-awareness. And when you're dealing with pain and struggle and hurt or disappointment or whatever it might be, even frustration in your business, it's really helpful to understand what your strengths are and to understand where you need extra help. And I know, and I have been saying to a handful of you over the last few weeks that have been checking in on me, um, my stock standard response has been, um, I've got this, I'm resilient as fuck. And pardon the French, Monday morning I can roll with it. Um, and that some of that's a positive affirmation to continue to tell myself that I've got this and that I'm resilient as fuck. It's just that reminder that, yeah, I've absolutely got this. And that self-awareness that I am already resilient and that I'm already in control of how I am behaving and how I want to move through, through this or how I want to resolve this situation. Um, so that first piece is around self-awareness and understanding what your strengths are and how you can play to those strengths to move forward. And then also what some of the opportunities or some of your weaknesses are that you might need to draw in um, some support or some extra help from friends to fill some of those gaps or to help you in those areas. The second one is about mindfulness. And I think in today's social media over-connected space, we tend to feel, um, we tend to lose the mindfulness at the best of times. And there's lots of chat and lots of buzzwords around mindfulness and whether you meditate or whether you journal or whether you focus on gratitude or whatever it might be, mindfulness is about having, being open and having attention and attention not retention have being attentive and just being present in the moment um and ultimately for me it comes and i've had a few people replay this back to me in the last week and i'm like oh that's mine that's mine like well you can't say that back to me but leaning into that pain or leaning into that frustration or that um anger or whatever it might be that you're dealing with in your personal or your professional life that's what the mindfulness has been about for me it's not about locking it away and pushing it and ignoring it and just hoping that it miraculously disappears because the universe has a funny way and it never actually does. So the mindfulness piece has been really, really important to be really aware, so come back to that self-awareness, about where you're at and what you're feeling and leaning in, I'm like leaning into that feeling and just sitting in it for a little while. Um, and my last week I've had, hey Alana, nice to see you. Um, my pity party has been a little bit longer than I'd anticipated and a little bit longer than I'd hoped for, but it is what it is. And um, finding the courage and the strengths 
strength and the resilience to be mindful of where I'm at and to be consciously making some of those decisions has been really, really important. The third one was around self-care and I've posted about this a few times, particularly in my stories over the last week, just taking time out for self, um, which again, I know sounds like a really like, Duh, of course, we should do that every day, but we don't. So actually stopping, actually prioritizing time for you um, in whatever form that is, whether that's exercising for you, whether that's sitting in your favorite place, whether that's getting a massage, whether that's journaling, whatever that, whatever works for you, um, prioritizing self-care, particularly when you're dealing with any of the stuff that I've been dealing with or any frustration or disappointment or annoyance or whatever it might be that's going on for you, um, finding the time for you, 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 is really, really important because it, and it re-energizes you and it recharges your batteries. I keep seeing this pig and I'm just laughing at it sitting on my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just where I'm at. Um, and I think that's probably why today I've woken up with a renewed sense of energy, vitality and courage, I think. I feel quite courageous today. Maybe I'll, I don't know, I was going to say go and get another tattoo. Hopefully not, you're not watching Carly. <laughs> I don't know, I just have woken up with a renewed sense of energy and a renewed sense of, it is about vitality. I really do feel alive and I really do feel proud and grateful for all of what I've been through. So despite how fucking hard it was. Um, so, and a lot of that comes from sitting in that pain or sitting in that sorrow. Um, and a couple of times over the last couple of days, I've gone and got a massage or I've gone and just sat on the beach by myself and thought about the world or, um, yesterday, um, I did a, I created a little ceremony that I wanted to do for, partly for myself and partly for Greg. Um, and there was a few different things, a few different like exercises that I put in place that I, in, that I actually like implemented. If anybody saw me on the beach, they would think I was crazy, but, um, that's what I needed to do. And that was part of my self care journey was again, taking control of how I responded to these situations and how I proactively wanted to move forward and the stuff that I had to leave behind. And, um, I spoke a lot to my friend, Catherine, about yesterday being the time when I was going to draw a line in the sand. I've been carrying a heap of guilt and this massive fuck off backpack with me for the last 12 months. Um, Greg passed away really suddenly and I have honestly, like every day for the last 12 months, thought what could I have done differently and the coulda, shoulda, woulda kind of stuff that's played over and over in my head and my backpack has just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I've been losing all this weight and picking up all this guilt through this backpack, which has been a really interesting time. And I'll talk about that at some stage, I'm sure. But um, yesterday, Catherine and I, I promised her that yesterday I would draw a line in the sand and today would be a fresh start and I'd move forward. And um, that's hard. Like, it's hard just to go, okay, cool, yeah, I'm going to draw a line and then tomorrow will be a new day. So yesterday I put some stuff in place and I implemented a few different little things and I had a lot of conversations with myself and I actually went to the beach and physically drew a line in the sand and stepped over the line, which um, I know for a lot of you is like, you crazy dick, and that's totally fine. But for me, I needed, uh, and I took a photo of the line as well. Uh, I needed to see it, I needed to physically feel like I was moving forward. And if I do start to slip back in those coulda, shoulda, woulda thoughts, and I haven't done that once since actually, um, I'm gonna pull out my photo and I'm gonna look at the line in the sand and I'm gonna remember that moment and I'm gonna take myself back to the beach and all that visualization stuff, all of that for me is about self-care and prioritizing me. Yesterday I could have um, I could have done different stuff or I could have done, you know, not so constructive things or I could have still blamed myself for the situation or felt all that guilt or unpacked the big backpack or whatever it might be. But instead I was in control of how I responded to that situation and I am in control of how I'm going to respond moving forward. And as ridiculous as it sounds, ever since I did that little ceremony, drew a line in the sand, uh, I have felt a massive amount of pride and courage within myself that I am more than capable of moving forward and more than capable of thinking back on him um, fondly and proudly and happy, like happy, remembering all those happy times and not having to unpack the, back, the backpack. And just in case you're not already thinking that I'm completely crazy, the other thing that I did while I was on the beach, I'm not going to tell you everything because you'll think that I am nuts. I actually took a backpack with me and 
<laughs> I can't believe I'm, I'm actually admitting this to you all. Anyway, I drew a line in the sand. I stepped over the line and I reminisced and I thought about all the good things that I was moving forward in and I took my backpack off. And that was a really symbolic metaphor, I guess. Not talking about volcanoes this morning. I'm talking about backpacks. <laughs> but um, I have reflected heaps over the last couple of months about the weight on my shoulders and this big backpack of guilt that I've been carrying. Um, and yesterday I took the backpack off and I left it there and it, it, I didn't, it didn't run away. Like it washed away in the ocean or something. I don't know. It's probably still there. I, not the physical backpack, but the... Anyway, I've lost the plot. <laughs> it worked for me. If anybody wants any more detail or doesn't understand what I'm talking about, let's talk offline because I feel like I'm oversharing. But um, all of that stuff that I've just spoken about, crazy person, is about self-care and the importance of slowing down and prioritizing us. Um, I've talked about this heaps when I've spoken about my weight loss over the last 12 months. I've spoken about it heaps when I've been talking about resilience and brand you know, building and business and all the rest of it. Cause it all really does come down to that old school, I always get this wrong, aeroplane analogy. You put your own, not gas mask, face mask on first, oxygen mask on first, and then your children or your friend or whatever it might be. Because if you're pouring from an empty cup, no one's going to benefit from that. So you have to prioritize self and you have to start to put yourself higher on that list. So self-care. I really passionately believe that I've woken up today with that like yeah, grit pep in my step because I have prioritized myself so much over the last um, week or two. And that's absolutely been at the expense of others. I've sacrificed time with my family. I canceled a client on Friday morning, which I felt really uncomfortable about, but I just was not in the right headspace to um, confidently step up and be there for her in that right space. So Sorry, Jen, I'll come back to you. <laughs> um, okay, so self-awareness, mindfulness, self-care. Number four is about connection or positive relationships. Um, and I've got a lot of you to thank for this. So over the last week, I've proactively reached out to my circle, as everyone likes to call them, or my network or my loved ones, and lent on them for support or for, um, you know, just to sit there and hold my hand. Uh, or listen to me cry or chat or whatever it might be. Um, and sometimes the people that I've spoken to over the last week haven't probably even noticed or realized that I, that's what I needed. Um, but I totally did, so thanks. So being able to draw from those that love you, everybody around you always says, I'm here if you need me. And you're like, yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. But we never have the courage or never have the vulnerability to actually say, I need you. Um, and I have said that to a couple of friends or a couple of really close connections over the last week. I actually need you. Like I'm calling in that card and going, yeah, I kind of need you. Um, and I know they have felt really grateful for that because they're there and they're there for me to be my, be my person. Um, and I have been unbelievably grateful for them having been there as well. And some of that has been... Um, I don't want to say accidental is not the right word, but like on Friday, last Friday, for example, I didn't expect Friday to be such a hard day. I just felt I woke up and it was, um, I got my ass out of bed, much preferred to have stayed there all day, um, and took James to school and Chrissy, who's not here, but I know she'll laugh at this later, but she texted me when I was at school and said, do you want to chat? And I was like, oh, Oh my God, yes, I need to talk to you. And just her reaching out, even though she didn't even realize that I needed her, she needed me at the same time. And it just, again, being vulnerable, saying yes and saying yes. Like I could, saying yes, saying yes. I could have gone home and got straight back into bed and gone, no, it's all too hard, I can't be bothered. I look like death and all the rest of it. And instead I said, hells yeah, I need, I need to speak to you, let's chat. And we sat and had coffee for a couple of hours and it was amazing. And then I spoke to another girlfriend. I just caught up, I, we just chatted. I didn't talk about anything major. It was just knowing that there were people out there who were supporting me and that love me and that have my back and all the rest of it. And yesterday, um, Carly came to my rescue. Um, I desperately tried to cancel on her 150 times. Um, I think I was scared to be vulnerable, to be like, I was scared of how I was going to be yesterday and all the rest of it. And she um, <laughs> forced herself upon me in like, so many ways. Um, but I, I needed her. And we just sat for a number of hours yesterday, just sat. She was there for me. She was my person. So 
finding those people that you connect with and finding those people that love you and that respect you and are there to support you through the ugly, through the good, the bad and the ugly. And we all say to each other, um, I'm always here, for just a phone call away, you know, just let me know if I can do anything to help. And so infrequently do any of us actually call in those favors or actually reach out and say, oh yeah, now's that time. I kind of need to now. <laughs> Sorry, Carly, I knew you'd be laughing at that. Um, so call in the favors like the person will appreciate that you've called on them and you will get immense value from calling on them and being sorry bad expression <laughs> um but that feeling of connection and that feeling of compassion and support i mean yesterday when carly and i were together we there was huge amounts of time that we didn't even talk like it wasn't even about divulging this all these secrets and talking endlessly about death or anything like that. It was just knowing that there was someone just there for me. So number four, when you're trying to get through all this shit and you're trying to build your resilience is to call on your network and you would be amazed at how many people are there ready and waiting in the wings to support you. Um, I did a couple of posts yesterday. I really tried to stay off my stories because I don't know. I was just in a weird space, obviously, and and that's okay as well. Um, but I did a few posts. I found a few quotes online that really helped me that I kind of, you know, positive affirmation kept talking through. And I posted a few of them. And I think um, on stories, I'm normally this positive, bubbly, confident, outspoken, loud, energetic thing. Um, and then I, I think I dislodged a few people's opinions yesterday and they were sort of like, I got a lot of DMs going, well, are you okay? What's going on? Are you, what's, you know, this is this is dark or this is negative or this is unlike you what's happening. Um, and, and that's okay as well, because if nothing else, it shows you that we are all human and we are all dealing with the same shit in some way or another. Um, and that being able to show you and being vulnerable with you a little bit in my own way by posting a quote, I, I couldn't get on stories yesterday and talk through it. That's what today's about. Um, it was just really important for me to remind everybody, including myself, that I am human and being vulnerable and being um, a little bit weak, there I said it, is, is okay. It's more than okay. Um, but I got through all of that and I've come out the other side by, and I've come out the other side feeling better than I probably have in a really, really long time by calling on, like, calling on self-care, calling on my loved ones um, and being comfortable with where I'm at and leaning in to some of that pain and some of that sorrow at the best of times, I guess it's been. And then the fifth piece for me that's been really helpful is my, just to come back to my focus or my purpose. Um, and lots of people would say, focus on your why. And I struggle with that sometimes. So Keeping things in perspective is something, is a strength or a superpower that I do have. I've got re a really good knack at looking at the big picture and that big picture thinking and that, um, that purpose that I'm able to focus on does help me move forward in the sense that I am part of something bigger and I am trying to build this mission or build this thing that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger um, professionally and also personally and People have got through far worse than what I'm, tr what I was trying to get through, and the big picture thinking and that perspective is always really, really helpful for me. Um, some of it is absolutely gratitude, focusing on the good things that we have, um, and focusing on all the amazing things that I have to be grateful for. Um, and a lot of what I've spoken about today is gratitude. Um, I'm extremely grateful for the network that I've built and the loved ones that I have and the fact that I have the flexibility to prioritize self-care and that I can just, you know, I do have a network and a village that I call on that look after my family when I am losing the plot, <laughs> as we all do at the best of times. Um, and all of that is absolutely gratitude. But remembering my purpose and the big picture thinking there are people far, far, far worse off than where I'm at today. And that big picture thinking and that perspective really does help me move forward. Not only because I'm focusing on the positives, but also because I am I can start to shape my attitude and my mindset on how I'm going to move forward and how I want to be as I move forward. Um, and I think that's a really important part, a really important thought process for us to have a think about as women, as mums, as biz owners, whatever bucket you fall into, we are all part of something bigger and it's our responsibility and we have the opportunity to shape that and to guide that forward. I was having a really interesting conversation with Michelle from Daffodilly yesterday about 
how we let go of some of that guilt and how we let go of some of the mistakes that we've made. Um, and I, there was a really long time that I would look back on the Greg situation and, and treat it as a mistake. Um, I fucked up. Like I genuinely felt for a really long time that I'd fucked up and that's why he died, which I totally know is logic brain. Like, of course that's not the case, but, um, illogic brain wherever that sits or in my heart or whatever it might be some of those little voices told me that I'd fucked up and the mistakes that I'd made had resulted in him ending his life and I can talk about that really confidently today like if I'd spoken about this this way last week blah, I'd be ugly crying for you now and no one needs to see that again I've done that enough recently in front of a lot of you but um, how do we let go of those mistakes and how do we give ourselves permission to move forward? And Michelle said yesterday, um, when you fuck up or when you make a mistake, you just have to say oops and keep moving. And I was like, oh, well, like, I was thinking that's way too simplistic. What do you mean? You have to like, you have to apologize and you have to seek forgiveness and you have to, you have to, you have to. And, and I think that was a really interesting moment for me where she was like, you just say oops and you keep moving forward. And of course, you know, if you fuck up with somebody else or you make a mistake, you say sorry and all that sort of stuff. But I really like that, that we are part of something bigger and we're all on a journey moving forward or on a roller coaster or whatever you want to think, however you want to think about it. But if you make a mistake, you apologize, you say whoops and you keep moving forward. And that that really sat with me. So thank you, Michelle, for sharing that. Because at the time I kind of brushed over it and was like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then it came back to me a few hours later and I was like, no, that's actually really interesting and a really interesting way of thinking about it. I had a scenario last year. Um, I was working with a person and um, she now wildly hates me because I didn't pay her in a timely fashion. And I completely appreciate that I fucked up. Uh, I apologized. I repaid all my debt, you know, I, I wasn't looking after my money appropriately, which is a great learning for me. Um, and But I've carried so much of that guilt and so much of that annoyance in my backpack. She is absolutely still carrying it with her. Um, and I feel, I feel quite sad that that's the case. But as I was talking to Michelle about it yesterday, I, ca I can't carry that with me any further. I can't continue to replay that over in my mind. So I'm saying whoops uh, and I'm moving forward. And part of that was my backpack yesterday. If anyone's just joined and they're like backpack, it's like go back and watch because I'm talking about backpack as a meta backpacks as a metaphor now. But um, I made a mistake, and we all make mistakes. Um, and part of making mistakes is how we learn and how we grow. And I can't control how that person behaves now. I can't control that she's still hanging on to that anger and that she's still replaying it and that she's still actively hating me in social media and all that sort of stuff but I can control how I am going to behave and how I am going to hold myself and how I'm gonna move forward. And Michelle's comment yesterday about whoops, keep going, I was like, I'm, I'm absolutely saying whoops. I've done all I possibly can to resolve that situation. Exactly the same with Greg. I've done all I possibly can to sit with that, to come to peace, come to peace? find peace, whatever, with that, and now I'm moving forward. And um, I know all of you on the line, on the listening to this after the live, whatever it might be, we all have the natural human tendency to hang on to that shit. And none of that is helpful. Your backpack just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and heavier and harder to carry and harder to get on and harder to get off. And it's just heavy. So give yourself permission, and I'm a bit off course now, sorry, Give yourself permission to let go of the backpack or unload the backpack and just say whoops. Um, and you, I'm actually like genuinely amazed at how good I have felt when I've woken up today and that that backpack sits on the beach or out in the ocean or whatever, at the bottom of the ocean now, because I've let go of it. I've drawn a line in the sand, I've stepped over it and I've let go of it. I'm not saying hi to my comments, sorry. Hi Di, I didn't even see you get on. Say, I don't know why I talk in the funny and different voice, but. <laughs> <laughs> when I refer to my comments, hi, I didn't even see you get on. Saying you feel weak is actually very courageous. Oh, thank you. It is, and I'm I'm really one to be comfortable with feeling weak. Uh, I think it's important to have those weak moments and to reflect on the why and reflect on what you can learn and how you can move forward. Carly, holy moly, this resonates. I wrote an email to an email subscriber very late last night about this exact topic fucking up, and we didn't even talk about it beforehand. Uh huh. We are the same person, my friend. Um, and some of it is about accepting that we're all human. Like we are all human. We are all trying our best. If you come at it from a place of kindness and a place of love, um, we're all doing our best. And sometimes you just have to say, oops, I fucked up. 
I need to, you know, please accept my apology, let's move forward. And then it's their prerogative if they want to hang on to it and they want to carry that backpack around for the next 12 months, good luck to them. You cannot control that situation. All you can control is how you're going to respond to that and how you're going to move forward. So um, they're kind of my big five in a little teeny tiny nutshell, how I have built my resilience, stress tested that muscle like nothing else in the last week and how I've got myself today to feeling I hate the expression like on top of the world but I do feel like I'm back to my back to myself or I'm um, a better version of what I was a week ago and some of that self-awareness self-care calling on my loved ones being mindful and thinking about the big picture or thinking about that perspective um, has absolutely helped me move forward and helped me get to where I am today. Um, I'm not trivializing any of it and I'm not saying, um, I think back on Greg now and I laugh at how, you know, how it happened or I laugh at the outcome or anything ridiculous like that. But already less than 24 hours later, I can think about him and I can remember the ridiculous things that we did together and I can remember the crazy, business moments that we had, we used to work together. Um, and I, I'm already thinking about it really, really positively and really differently. And I don't, I, have, I, I haven't thought about the shame and I haven't thought about the guilt and I haven't thought about any of that pain that I had or that I've carried with me for the last um, 12 months. So how can you offload your backpack is kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't know where I get this shit from. Like, I don't know where these metaphors come from, but the volcano really, really resonated with so many of you. I know it's not my metaphor. Like, I didn't come up with a volcano analogy. If you saw my stories during the week, you would have noticed that my eldest son came home with a book on Friday about volcanoes. I nearly died. Like, I was genuinely nearly died. I don't know how that happened. I don't even know what an eight-year-old is doing learning about volcanoes, but... All weekend we've read about volcanoes and then today it's all about the backpack but and I know for some of you you'll be like she's nuts and good luck to you like think that I'm nuts I'm totally comfortable with that but I think it's a really really interesting concept for us to all just sit with briefly and have a little think about what are you hanging on to and how is that serving you or how is that helping you move forward because I personally have been hanging on to so much shit and none of that has been helping me. And if it's been hindering me, like it's absolutely been holding me back, weighing me down, stressing me out, worrying me, playing on my mind constantly and all that sort of stuff. And just by sitting in that for a little bit and mapping out a plan on how I was going to move through that or how I was going to move forward, um, I genuinely feel like I have. Uh, and that some of that is the crazy stuff, the stuff that I had to do, going to the beach, drawing a line in the sand. I physically stepped over the line. I didn't just draw the line and be like, okay, I've drawn a line in the sand. I actually drew the line. I spoke to myself, like I had a little conversation with myself. I stepped over the line and I took my backpack off. <laughs> and I know I'm not a woo-woo person. I'm not a hugely spiritual person. Um, but there was just something about that ritual and about that moment that made me go, yes like this is how i'm going to move forward and i'll i will check back in with you guys but if if i have when i start thinking about stuff moving forward over the next couple of weeks if i start to slip back into that guilt and start to fill that backpack up again um i'm going to take myself back to that moment because that was a really freeing energizing it was a massive release i took a huge backpack off my back uh so i feel lighter now and i have genuinely woken up today feeling uh, having a huge amount more vitality terrible english but you know what i mean uh i feel alive coming back to my little tattoo that sits on my wrist now i feel alive and i haven't felt dead over the last week but i have felt heavy uh and today i'm back so you better bloody watch out because i don't have that big backpack holding me down anymore um and i'm really really excited about how i personally and how that will impact me professionally i'm going to move forward and i'm going to keep running so there you go. I hope that made sense. I hope that resonated. Um, if you've got any questions, please ask. Um, I'm not an expert at this stuff by any stretch of imagination. I'm not, I haven't studied psychology. I've often thought about it, but I haven't. Um, but I've got lots of life experience to draw from. And I think just us talking and sharing and um, working through this together. Uh, and I know after this, I'll get DMs and I'll have some of these conversations with you one-on-one, -on -one, which I freaking love, like I did after my volcano speech a few weeks ago. But that 
all of those conversations and all of those discussions and learning and hearing about where you guys are at as well absolutely helped me move forward and helped me understand that I'm not alone and that we are all dealing with this own, with our own shit and all that sort of stuff as well. So keep talking to one another. If it's not to me, that's okay. If it's to a girlfriend, if it's to a loved one, if it's to your dog, whatever it might be, whatever works for you, you've just got to keep working through this stuff and processing this stuff. Um, and we're all going to continue to make mistakes. And when you make a mistake, you apologize, you say whoops, and you keep moving forward. Thank you, Michelle. Um, so... Get rid of your freaking backpack, load it up, put all that shit in there, do whatever you need to do to take it off and move forward. Um, I had no idea the power of what I promised myself yesterday and I thank a lot of you listening today or who will come back and listen to this later um, who gave me permission to sit in it and gave me permission to feel it and to lean into it and all that kind of jazz. Um, but I do feel like I'm back. So it was totally worth it. <laughs> I feel like I'm on a L'Oreal campaign now. You're worth it. And we are worth it. So it is worth sitting and thinking about some of the stuff I've spoken to about today, how you can build your grit, you know, that, and how, good noise, and how you can build your resilience as well because that, that um, superpower, and if you can build that up to be a strength of yours, will absolutely help you get through this stuff faster and help you to continue to take momentum and continue to move forward as well. Uh, so lots going on at ESS HQ this week. Um, I've got some super cool stuff going on actually that I'll share with you throughout the week. Uh, I'm co-working with some peeps during the week and I'm doing some corporate training with a really cool company tomorrow. I'll share that with you tomorrow. Um, but I'm around as always, if there's anything I can do, or if you want to sense check anything or shout out or have a question, just ask. Um, I'm a DM or a message or an email or a phone call or whatever form of technology you want to adopt, uh, please just let me know because um, I wouldn't have got through the last week particularly or, you know, the last couple of years without calling on my support network and out without reaching out to people. Uh, I'm a talker if you haven't noticed. Um, and even if you're not, just starting to have a think about how um, shining some light on that self-awareness or that mindfulness or finding time for you as well, that self-care piece is without a doubt a really, really important piece. So... There you go. Volcanoes, backpacks. What is next? <laughs> I hope you guys have a great week. Um, reach out if I can help. Say goodbye to Pepper the Pig. And I will talk to you soon.